watch a 30 for 30 last night uh long gone summer whatever the hell it was talking about 1998 when mark mcguire and sammy sosa in the same division just went head to head in a barbarian baseball bat swinging alpha competition who can hit baseball further <laughs> it was awesome to watch it really was because I didn't know that in 1994 baseball was basically dead. I didn't know that in 95, 96, and in those years that baseball was basically done. So I had no idea that Mark McGuire won a World Series with the Oakland Athletics. I had no clue him and Jose Canseco were, were teammates at one point. Oh, yeah. I didn't know anything about this Southern California guy who ended up going to St. Louis, which everybody thought was only going to be for a one-year run. He starts out two for 28, gets a standing ovation by the Cardinals fans. Then he starts hitting dinger, 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 dinger. And in 1997, he almost had the home run record. And going into that 98 year, the infamous year with Sammy Sosa, it was expected for him to potentially break the home run record. I had no idea. I was nine years old at the time. I didn't know that they thought this redheaded guy out in St. Louis who once had a great mullet was going to break this record that had been held for a long, long time. And then Sammy Sosa, Chicago Cubs, comes out of nowhere and starts swinging the bat over there in Wrigleyville. I mean, learning about that last night was really cool. Did I think the documentary kind of stunk? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> documentaries are supposed to dive into things, you know. Documentaries are supposed to give you a little bit of information that you don't have. And I guess they gave me a little bit of that. But, boy, it wasn't until the very end that they talked about chemistry and they put that all on Barry Bonds' back, <laughs> which is very interesting. I, the, the thing I wrote down in my notes section last night while writing it because, you know, as a vitamin user, sometimes you have great thoughts and you, you kind of let them slip away. But Mark McGuire, there was a couple things I thought about there. When Tom Brady speaks, listening to him uh, talk about that Atlanta Falcons 28-3 game and how he reframed his mindset is what he said. I, he had to reframe it in his mind for what it was. And that's a, anytime you can listen to somebody that's great talk about them doing something great, no matter who it is, you should listen. Just because there might be a little bit of thing. Mark McGuire talking about what he was what was going through his head when he was stepping up for that 60 second home run and how the place was deafening and he had that bat on his shoulder and they were like what did you hear he was like it's just my own thoughts basically Mark McGuire is just in his own head talking to himself that entire time and how he tries to what like that type of stuff is very fascinating to me because the ability to turn off the entire outside noise and focus in on something is ability that not a lot of people have that is an ability that the greats have that is a reason why if you're hungover or or food poisoned or have the flu you can check into a game six because you have this ability to turn off all the external bs and focus in on what matters just like when kobe was going through what he was going through he had some of his best basketball when you talk about brett Favre, his dad passed away the night before he was able to have some of his best football because the ability to turn off what's going on outside and focus in is a trait and a talent that not a lot of people have. So listen to Mark McGuire talk about what was going through his mind and how he was a pitcher at one point. I didn't know that. And then he said it was kind of hard for him to come to grips with the fact that he was a home run hitter. Like he said that in baseball, that's not a really good thing to be known as a home run hitter because I guess it makes you one trick pony. I'll tell you what it made you, Mark. Rich. <laughs> I wouldn't mind being a home run hitter if that was the case. But there was a conversation where he was talking about the testing. And he said that they never tested back in the day. There was no regulations. So that makes me ask you this question. I was nine years old, and I'm not old enough to have this thought back then. I just assumed like, oh, yeah, we we're taking all the juice. Just let them go hit home runs. It's a lot more fun. I mean, those stadiums were packed out from east to west. Come see the big baseball whacker guy <laughs> in the – that's what it was. They were selling out. It was the number one conversation. The fact that Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire liked each other too. Sammy Sosa obviously said it could have been Griffey, but God picked me to be the guy, whatever it is. And the way Sammy Sosa has handled it, 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 being in second place basically to Mark McGuire whenever they were tied at 65 with like a three games left. Or, Sammy Sosa was saying, uh, I tell people, yeah, Mark might have beat me, but to get to Mark, you got to get through me first. <laughs> like that. That was a great way to look at the entire thing. If you're Mark McGuire, though, and you're looking around, and everybody around you is taking stuff, basically. Not everybody. I assume there are some people who didn't, and congratulations to them to have the moral fortitude to say no. But if, if you're Mark McGuire, and you're looking around, and you see everybody taking stuff, and you start taking stuff, and you start selling out stadiums everywhere, and you put this sport that you love, which he said has been a part of his life, his entire life, he's still giving back, and you put this sport on the map by doing it, it'd be very hard to be like, you know what? 
I just made the wrong decision for putting all these steroids mm. in my body, especially if they're not testing for it. There's no regulations. There was a voluntary test, I guess, that came out and 106 players ended up on it. Who would do that, by the way, if you're on stuff? I guess guys that don't care if you get caught because that's how lax days ago was. It was like, yeah, you can take stuff. You do whatever you got to do. That was when baseball was at its finest. And then whenever the voluntary test came out and then the, uh, the Balco stuff came out, and it just kind of boom, 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 all compounded on top of each other. But it's hard for me to really – now, granted, you can think Mark McGuire is unlikable, which I assume a lot of people thought that after last night's and, and going into the thing, they probably thought he was unlikable. And you can think Sammy Sosa is an interesting guy, which I think a lot of people thought going into last night and they kind of solidified it or whatever. But I think whenever you think about it from being a human standpoint in the, the no testing of something, I don't want to say if you don't test for something, you promote it. But it did feel as if you're not having regulations on something and it's making your game better. The MLB was probably like, uh, like, yeah, you guys, <laughs> you guys, yeah, you guys do whatever you need to do. Here, here's some clean needles, just like they give out down at the meth places, by the way. Here you go. Go ahead and do it. Yep, we're selling out stadiums. We know it. Yep, Sports Illustrated's covering us for the first time. Here you go. Just four years ago, we weren't even going to be a league. Don't take it, but here you go. <laughs> like, that's what I think it was like. And... I guess I can't blame, I can't blame Mark and Sammy Sosa for taking advantage of the world that they were in at that point. Although you would hope that they would be able to say, nope, to, to, to the dope. But at, at some point when there's that much money on the line and it's engulfing your entire, it'd be hard to say, that'd be something that would be hard to say no to, I assume. Yeah, and those times were the absolute best because you'd be watching regular TV or a game and they would cut in with every single Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa at bat. It was mm -hmm. 5,000 people were at batting practices for him oh, yeah. going around the country mm -hmm. and he would put on a show during batting practice. How about a 60 second home run just being a line drive <laughs> right out, shortest home run he hit during his entire stint and then his kid comes jogging out and says, What's up? What's up, Zito? How about the kid? Uh, the was it field worker that grabbed the oh, ball yeah. and the, gave it back to him? The equipment, uh, Mr. McGuire. I do believe <laughs> he said he beat his brother to the ball because his brother was little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a fat stooge. Could he make it there? There was a guy who caught a 70th home run. Oh, uh, there's a story going around. I don't know if it's accurate. They wanted. They wanted the ball back and an autograph, and he said he'd like to meet Mark McGuire. And I guess Mark McGuire said, no, that's not a part of it. That guy sold it for like $3 million to Smart. old buddy or whatever oh, that yeah. was part of that Scott thing. McFarland. Yeah, so that guy, if you're just sitting in – by the way, if you're sitting in the outfield during one of these McGuire runs, you're potentially catching a lottery ticket. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why I took my fishing net in there. <laughs> that's why you got to take your fishing net it's in a, there. It's a funny thought, too, because like, uh, uh, we were watching yesterday, and like the, the nosebleeds were getting those balls sometimes. Well, And the rivers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a video of him hitting it over the Bush light sign, I believe it yep. was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was hitting moon Monster. shots. Oh, yeah. He was hitting moon. He was absolutely yoked. Massive. So was Sammy Sosa. And I think everybody knew it. If Now, granted... I guess if everybody was taking, you'd be like, yeah, that's what a normal baseball player looks like. But now in 2020, looking at that video, you look at Mark McGuire, you're like, oh, that guy's eating all the steroids there. Like, <laughs> and then you look at the person, by the way, that was uh, maybe playing first base that he was dapping up running by, you're like, that guy looks like he's probably on some, you're, you're telling me that guy's hips are like this and then his ass and his waist go out? Like, I don't know if that's a natural Stairmaster move or if that guy's on, there was, a, I just, I didn't know that it was literally like a don't ask, don't tell situation oh, yeah. in the yeah. MLB. I, I thought it was like they were getting around the test. I thought they were potentially putting the Visine bottle in between the thighs and doing the whole thing. It was just like the MLB was like, ah, well, this is better than we've ever played baseball. <laughs> just go ahead and put the big barbarian baseball whacker guys in the box. Well, and to your point, too, like that's what they said. Like the media definitely knew, and they, they were fine with it then. And then when it, things started to turn, they immediately vilified these guys. But they showed it last night, too. Like I remember seeing those post-game press conferences, and he'd have that bottle of Andro just sitting in his locker. Like wasn't trying to hide it at all or anything. And I also thought it was hilarious. They showed Barry Bonds uh, like in one of his, like, like earlier years with the Giants, and he was so tiny then. And then they flash back later to when he broke the record, and his head is like ten <laughs> times as big as, as yeah. It that's was like, earlier. That's like the classic Pirates when he was uh, with the Pirates yes. first when he was at his end. What were you gonna say, Zito? Something about Sammy Ison? Because I'll tell you what, if I'm a Cubs fan, not only did I run that guy that had the headphones on that uh, Bartman. Bartman, Bartman, you run him out of town. Now you run it. Sammy Sosa out of town as well. These Cubs, these Cubs fans, uh, just aren't thankful for anything. No, the Ricketts will forgive him sooner uh, than later, but. Uh, 
Why did they get? Why did they not? I think it was more the cork bat than anything. No, they want. They want. They wanted him to make a, a statement bat. on steroids and like admit that he was using them. And he's the like, Cubs did. Yeah. yeah, and he said that his name was a part of 106. Why you ask me? That's what he said. I believe. And who why, reads yeah. the New York Times anyways? You know. Why well, nowadays it doesn't matter who it is. Exactly. I yeah. mean, there's like, it depends. I don't know which. I don't know which production or publication is a real one in which all I know for sure is that the onion is not. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Satire. That's the one. Okay. Yep. That's the only one I know that the onion is not. If it comes from anybody else, I have no idea who, who, who's this coming from? I, I, Cause on the internet nowadays, I mean, you get McCockner by newspapers. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I mean, yeah. there is a chance you could get, anybody can get it on the internet nowadays. I don't know who's who, but the reason why we're asking you, Sammy is because, uh, we get that there was 105 other names on that list oh, yeah. that were on a volunteer. But you see, this documentary is about you and Mark McGuire. <laughs> exactly. So that is why we are asking you directly. Like that, pro- the producer asking him and then him like giggling and saying, I'm happy, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and then the producer is like, yeah, but you did not answer that. <laughs> uh, mm. Yeah, but you, Sammy. He's like, why are you asking me? I don't know. Crazy <laughs> like, You're a part of the documentary. <laughs> I don't if I'm Sammy Sosa, though, and if I'm Mark McGuire, at this point, I'm saying everybody that was anybody was taking it. The MLB knew we were taking it. They didn't care. Nobody cared. There was just a world we were in. If you want to put an asterisk next to it, fine. Put an asterisk next to it. Because, by the way, the pitchers might have been taking stuff, too. Definitely so let's assume yeah. that those pitchers, what they would have been able to put, we would like their asterisks as well. Put the asterisks next to it and say, hey, big barbarian baseball whacker guys were on steroids, but also hitting from big barbarian pitcher steroid baseball guys as well. Trevor Bauer had a really yeah. good point, too, on Twitter. He said, like, the Hall of Fame is like an enshrinement of the history of baseball, and this was a massive part of baseball history. So, like, these guys should be in the Hall of Fame. Like, it's a joke that they're leaving him out. By the way, Trevor Bauer, power hour outage, he said 95% to 100%. He thought baseball was going to come back. I wonder how he feels now, especially with the fact that the MLB controls completely the length of the schedule. What up, Nick? You know what I learned last night that I thought was interesting was I didn't know Roger Maris was, like, vilified like that oh, among yeah. baseball yeah. people. If you if you go back, I guess there's a really good documentary called 61. It's a on, movie, but yeah. yeah on HBO mm-hmm. about his life. Which and guy's this? Roger Maris Roger was Maris. the no guy who record. broke Babe Ruth's home run record, and people did not want him to break it, and when he did they put an asterisk on it because it was what a longer season yeah. by a couple of games yeah. a handful yep. of games and they basically said this isn't the real home run record you got more games to play you you don't matter this is gonna the nfl should get ahead of this because this is gonna happen with the nfl with the 17 game mm-hmm. season from 16 game season to nfl or 17 game season there's gonna be just like i would assume there's a lot of ogs in the football world they're upset about their numbers getting mis- uh, passed because rules are changing for the game to become a little bit more pass friendly for wide receivers let alone you add on 17 another game and I, I just think that the nfl should get ahead of this and say hey this part of history is going to be known as a 16 game season in the hall of fame we will judge everybody through this series to the or through this era to this era and then 17 game season bang a whole new era begins even though things like they're gonna to have to get ahead of that because there's always going to be mm-hmm. asterisks next to everything that's why the covid championships I hope get to go on because that asterisk will be one that we'll talk about forever. We'll say, hey, remember when the Pittsburgh Penguins came out of quarantine, <laughs> Santa Claus what? was getting better than anybody won the COVID Cup over there in Las Vegas and probably Columbus because uh, uh Canadian government was walking down to go oh. over because the yodel yodel of the coronavirus cases. <laughs>